Hello YouTube and welcome back to Friday Minis. Today, we're going to be talking about video compression. Now here's the deal. A video is essentially a whole bunch of images played back in quick succession. Of course, to be precise, the term rapid succession would refer to actually the frame rate of the video. For a motion to appear fluid, we must show 20 something to 30 frames per second. Now stretch that out to a video of 10 minutes or so, that's a lot of pictures. Having a lot of pictures of course translates to taking up a lot of storage space and that's why compression is so crucial. And even techniques that are extremely efficient for single images don't really work when it comes to video. This is why additional techniques have to be put in to actually compress videos even further. Luckily, we do actually have something to work on. You see, most videos are actually, you know, just motion. And since these frames are taken in such rapid succession, you can kinda imagine that the changes between each frame is going to be quite slight. In fact, video compression takes advantage of this to actually discard the things that were available in previous or future frames. This leads us into the main thing I want to talk about today, which are the three types of frames which are used in video compression. We start off with the iframe or the intra frame. Now, this frame is considered a main building block because it is a complete picture. So in this case, there is no huge saving through this compression method because you still have to store the entire picture. However, the next frame doesn't have to be an iframe. The next frame can be a P frame or a predicted frame. Now, a P frame only holds the changes between itself and its previous frame. So what this means is to construct a P frame, you're going to have to keep backtracking all the way until the nearest iframe. Then you're going to grab that iframe, apply the first P frame, apply the second P-frame, so on and so forth until you reach the P-frame you're looking at. This would of course be a whole lot more complicated than saving a whole bunch of iframes, but this offers compressibility. Since every frame only saves the changes, well, you don't have to store that much information. So the question is, how often do we have iframes? Since P-frames can do everything, can we just have a single iframe at the start and just P-frames all the way? In theory, that is not impossible. In fact, it can be done and there are certain situations where I feel like that actually has been done. As mentioned earlier, of course this will create a lot of problems when it comes to seeking the video because of course every time you want to look at something, it's going to have to backtrack all the way to the first iframe and start applying all the p-frames to, you know, that particular iframe. Personally, I set iframes at about 1 second intervals, that way seeking should be easier. And of course, if the video is somehow corrupted, for example, you are actually receiving a stream or you know a TV broadcast, every time something is messed up, the P-frames are just going to build on that. It's not going to realize that anything is wrong, it's just going to keep adding on to whatever is there. The only way to recover from this is to receive a complete iframe. When you have an iframe, you discard everything else and you start from there. And that's why there are advantages to actually having you know many iframes throughout your video. Now there's actually an additional type of frame called the B-frame. B-frames are actually bi-directional predictive frames and essentially, as its name implies, it doesn't only use previous iframes, it can actually also use information from future iframes. Of course, B-frames save the most bandwidth seeing as that, well, it has a lot of things to refer to. However, there are some situations where its use is not practical. For example, in the event of a broadcast or a stream, you don't have any future iframes to refer to. So of course, you can only refer to previous frames. And that's why, you know, you can always use B-frames. And that's it. Today, we've covered the three different types of frame used in video compression. Of course, video compression uses many other techniques to actually, you know, implement its function. And of course, these couple of methods aren't the only ones. The concepts shared with you in this video, however, serve as a basis for general video compression. Once again, that's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Don't forget to like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. You're watching Zero612TV.